Hello everyone, in this video I'll be going over what courses you'll be taking in university in order to become a mining engineer. Since I did my undergraduate degree at UBC, I'll use that for my examples. And also, since every university's requirements might vary slightly, there may be variations between countries and even over time. Since schools tend to change their programs over time to adapt to the changing market needs, and I think that's a wonderful thing. But overall, the mining engineering degree requirements are pretty similar, so let's get started. So first up, in year 1 you have your foundation year. In your first year, you'll be taking foundational courses in physics, math, English, and coding. In my opinion, the first year is probably the most boring year, since you're taking really dry courses that aren't related to mining, and the courses can be quite hard too. For the physics courses, you'll be taking courses on Mechanics 1, Introductory Physics for Engineers 1, and Physics 2. For Mechanics 1, you'll be studying Newtonian physics such as friction, impulse, momentum, work, and energy. This is the course where you'll get really familiar with free body diagrams. For Introductory Physics for Engineers 1, you'll learn about heat, thermodynamics, oscillations, waves, and sound. You may already have covered some of these in high school, but this course will go deeper in depth into these topics. In the second version of this class, Introductory Physics for Engineers 2, you learn about electricity and magnetism, DC and AC circuits, and optics. Of all of these physics course, I only had to use the DC and AC circuits in the future years, and maybe a little bit of the free body diagrams and rock mechanics. And so for the math courses, you'll be taking Differential Calculus, or also known as Calc 1, and Integral Calculus, known as Calc 2, and Linear Algebra. Differential and Integral Calculus are pretty self-explanatory, it just goes more in depth than what you may have learned in high school. For Linear Algebra, you learn about 2D and 3D geometry, vectors and matrices, eigenvalues and vibration. You also learn how to use MATLAB, which is a program for dealing with matrices and array mathematics. Personally, I haven't used MATLAB in my career so far, and pretty much everyone I know don't use it either. However, if you go into R&D, you might need to know how to use the software. Other courses you need to take in your first year, so you also need to take University English, which focuses on research and writing in academics. I don't really remember what I've learned in this class other than use APA citation format for technical writing and MLA format for humanity papers. And if that's not right, then I've learned nothing from that class. For the first year chemistry course, you learn about chemical bonding, properties of matter, aqueous equilibria, and electrochemistry. It's similar to your high school chemistry class, but with a little more breadth and a little more depth. In your coding course, you learn the foundational programming logic. In my class, the language we learned was C, and I think this is one of the most useful courses since knowing how to code in C is highly transferable to other coding languages such as Python, VBA, and so on. And lastly, you'll need to take two Introduction to Engineering courses, where you'll learn about the roles and responsibilities of the engineer, the different engineering disciplines, sustainability, technical communication, and engineering ethics. These are all skills that will enable you to become a successful engineer, no matter what discipline you go into. And you'll also be required to take an elective, and usually people take a second language. For mining engineers, probably the most useful second language you can learn is Spanish, since lots of mining companies based in North America have operations in Latin America. So on to year two. Year two is where things get a little more interesting since that's when you see the first of your mining courses. However, you still need to take some more foundational courses such as technical communications, which teaches you how to write memos and make presentations. You also need to take a course in soil mechanics, earth science for engineers, fluid mechanics, and statistics. The soil mechanics class was kind of useful since you need to know how soil behaves under different conditions and how they can fail. In the earth science course, you learn about design of structures and waste disposal sites through various case studies including both the technical implications and societal implications. 
For fluid mechanics, you learn about how fluid moves, which can be useful in your later career, especially if your work deals with pumps or fans, and that's especially important for underground mines. And lastly, there's statistics, where you learn about probability, hypothesis testing, analysis of variance, and more. And while I haven't used these statistical concepts in my career, I think it's a really good course because it really helps you to understand and interpret data properly, and it's just a good life skill to have. Plus, it can also help make you look and sound smarter. Now on to the mining course. In your second year, you only have three technical mining courses, and the last one for us was a seminar course where industry people would come in and present about their work or their company. In the introduction to mining course, you learn about general mining terminology, the mining life cycle, design, planning, and operation of a mine. And in the introduction to mineral processing course, you learn about how ore is turned into concentrate, which is the end product that a mine sells. There's a series of process that happens in the processing plant. If you like working with flow sheets, mass balance, or even chemistry, the mineral processing could be the right stream for you to go into. And lastly, in Introduction to Mineralogy, you learn about mineral formation and techniques used to identify minerals. So if you're curious about the exploration side of mining, then you'll find this course really interesting. So that's it for this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, because I'll be releasing part two of this video where I'll be talking about third and fourth year classes, which is the more interesting part because that's where the majority of your mining classes are.